last. So, you know, if, if you want to turn your camera off, you're, you're free to. Um, if you don't mind, mute yourselves for now. And if you got any questions at the end, we'll have time for questions. All right. Let's go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. Yes, and I think also your. Um... Uh, give me one second. Okay, can you all see my screen? Can I get a thumbs up if y'all can? Okay, great. Um, awesome. Okay, so today the topic of discussion is metabolic adaptation. And that's like a really complicated word, but it doesn't need to be. It's just metabolic adaptations to weight loss. How does your body adjust to weight loss? Um, what are the positives of that? What are the challenges of that? Um, and basically the, the topic is like, how do we take care of our bodies for long-term results? Um, that's a really challenging question that not many people or programs really have a great answer to. Um, if anybody's keeping up, I think the last, the last study I saw, 95% of people aren't able to maintain weight loss. Um, that is partially maybe uh, uh, people kind of fall off the wagon and stop doing what they're doing that works. But I would argue that probably primarily what's happening is our structure that we go about losing weight is, is flawed. Um, and it doesn't take into account human physiology and the way the body works. Um, so this is going to be kind of a, a more brief than I'd like because you can get a PhD in any, any one slide on here. Um, but I hope it is informative enough to really help you in your, in your like lifetime pursuit of health. Um, okay, so let me give it a, a, a quick definition of metabolic adaptation. Uh, so metabolic adaptation is a series of hormonal adaptations to weight loss or weight loss attempts, which make weight loss challenging or impossible. Um, so, so many of us have had the experience where, hey, like I used to be able to lose weight and sometimes it came back or sometimes some of it came back. Um, but now I do the same things that doesn't work anymore. Or, hey, I lost 15 pounds, I lost 20 pounds. I can't figure out how to get the next five pounds off or I can't figure out how to get the next 50 pounds off. Whatever your journey is, I mean, just having you know, worked with so many people, I, I probably hear this from 95 out of 100 people that we work with. Um, so metabolic adaptation was first um, called that. It was discovered in, in bodybuilders. Um, and it was discovered in bodybuilders when they did a really extreme diet to look really, really good for a show, to be on stage with really low body fat. Um, and what they found was that in these bodybuilders, their testosterone and other hormone levels were way, way below a healthy level. Um, even up to two, three years after a show. So basically what a bodybuilder does is they spend a lot of time building a ton of muscle and then they get their body fat down to like three, 4%. Um, and the body does not like that. And the body does not respond well to that. That is an extreme amount of stress being put on the body and, uh, and the body resists it and the body adapts to it. Now, you might be sitting at home, you're like, I'm not a bodybuilder. What does this have to do with me? Well, it's discovered in bodybuilders. It's been researched in bodybuilders, but it, uh, this effect is seen across almost all populations that have large weight fluctuations, a lot of weight to lose, or if you've dieted you know, more than once or twice, you have some level of metabolic adaptation happening. So this is a sliding scale. It's not you're either metabolically adapted or you're not. Everybody's adapting all the time. Um, but when I say, hey, you might be metabolically adapted, I'm referring to something like, hey, you may have lost weight in the past or you've tried to lose weight in a way that has left your body's uh, hormones like out of balance and out of whack in a way that's not allowing you to be, be really, really healthy and feel your best. Um, so does that kind of make sense? Are we kind of tracking with that? So it's not on off. It's a, it's a spectrum. It's a, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to have questions. It's, it's, it, that'll, be, that'll be natural, but we'll work through them. Okay, so why should you care? Like I said, you know, you're not a bodybuilder. Well, many people that I work with uh, come to us uh, like metabolically adapted, but certainly not everybody's metabolically adapted. So, so why, should, why should we care? Well, if you are metabolically adapted, we got to learn how to get out of this sticky situation. You're probably not feeling your best. You're frustrated that you're not able to lose weight like you used to be able to, or it just hasn't budged anyways. Um, and we want to meet you where you are and, and help you get out of that. 
if you aren't in this situation, you're like, yeah, I'm actually losing weight right now. Or, or, Hey, I've never had a problem getting weight off. Well, let's make sure that you never kind of run into this problem because as you age, you get more and more likely to become adapted. And, and everybody knows it gets harder and harder um, to lose weight and, uh, and, to, and to make a big change in your body as you get older. Okay, so a quick blurb. The diet industry is not our friend in this. Uh, the diet industry sets us up to run after a program that's gonna force us into being really metabolically adapted. Um, they do this by, you know, putting a, a calorie slashing diet, uh, really fast weight loss transformations, you know, lose, lose 15 pounds in 15 days is something that I saw the other day. Um, and just in general, the media, the advertising doesn't set people up for, for realistic results and for, and for long-term success. This does not mean you can't make a really radical transformation in your body. It just is unlikely that you're gonna make a really radical transformation really quickly doing all the things that you wanna do, that, if that kind of makes sense. Um, so this is a real quick primer on, on, um, on your metabolism. So what is, what is metabolism? When we say, meta most of us say, you know, I've got a slow metabolism or, or so-and-so's got a fast metabolism. What do we mean by that? Well, metabolism is literally just the reactions that makes your body work. Um, and there are a couple of different components that we can throw metabolism into. Um, so if you, uh, everything that you do, moving my arms like this, that's gonna fall under metabolism. Every reaction in my body is metabolism. So you have what we call, and they, they all have fancy names. I'm gonna give you the, the simple names. <laughs> your basal metabolic rate, think of this as your, your, um, your baseline level. What is the energy you need to exist if you laid in a bed all day, what would your reactions add up to be? So um, your brain to operate, that's part of your metabolism. It needs energy. Your breathing needs energy to operate. That's part of your metabolism. Pumping blood is part of your metabolism. You laid in bed all day and you didn't move at all. The energy that you would expend to keep you alive is your BMR. Then you've got non-exercise movement, or if you're um, snooty, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. We're just gonna call it non-exercise movement, all right? This is walking through the grocery store and pushing your cart. This is turning the steering wheel in your car. This is walking around the kitchen, cutting with a knife. Um, then you have, this is like the thermic effect of food. That it's just digestion. So if you eat a potato, you know, you don't get to use 100% of the energy in that potato, right? You actually have to expend some percentage of energy to break down that potato. Um, and then all the way up here, this tiny little bit, this eat is exercise. You might notice that does not make up a very big percentage of your body's metabolism. And this is, these numbers are not set in stone, um, but these are pretty good generalized, um, pretty good generalized like metrics across the population. Even if you exercise pretty regularly, if you literally just count the calories you're expending in a workout, you get a good workout, you might expend 100 calories. You might expend a couple hundred calories, but that is truly a drop in the bucket for what everything else adds into. Does that mean exercise isn't important? No, um, we'll talk about that in a second. But if you're trying to lose weight just by exercising, it's not gonna work. If you're trying to just move your way to, to like, you know, I'm gonna get in the gym and I'm just gonna work out until I lose a pound. You'll be in the gym for three weeks. Um, actually, we spend a ton of our energy literally just fidgeting. Literally, uh, we, we spend a lot of our energy just walking around the store. Um, and, uh, and so all of these components make up our reactions. But the big one that's really important here for this discussion is this BMR, this baseline, what is the amount of energy you're expending to exist? So, um, so you can calculate this, the, all of these components of metabolism. You can take someone and put them in a lab and track them for a day, or you can track someone while they sleep. And you can get a really good objective measurement for how fast their metabolism is. Okay, so when they uh, they do studies, they've they've taken you know a thousand people of of a certain height and weight and age and gender, and then they take them into a lab and they study and see how fast is your metabolism. And most of you have probably seen this. 
This is the Harris-Benedict equation, and this is an equation that's developed to estimate your total daily expenditure, your BMR, your NEAT, your effective food, your exercise. So they've taken, you know, this has been validated by, you know, a couple hundred thousand people that, that they run these formulas by, and this is just an estimate. I've never seen anyone that this is perfect on, but it's actually pretty close. So if you take someone, I think the example that I used was a, a 220 pound year old woman who is 58 years old and she's doing light exercise a couple of times a week. Um, she would be estimated as her expenditure should be somewhere around 2,400 calories. So let's go back up here. That means for her to exist, to pump blood, to breathe, to have her brain, for her to be able to walk around the grocery store, turn the steering wheel of her car, um, for her to be able to eat a potato and get the energy out of it, and for her to go to the gym a couple of times a week, she probably needs somewhere close to 2,400 calories. Now, again, I think this was actually like a 240 pound woman. So, so a woman is probably a little, a little bit overweight there. Um, and then, but, but that's, a, that's a, a decent estimate for how much she needs. Now on the right is what I see very, very commonly in, our, in, a, in a client. You know, I, I have most people just give me, hey, track your food for a week and show me what you're like. Most people are not gaining weight a bunch day to day, right? You might, most people, when they gain weight, they gain the course of a, of a year. So a pretty good way to estimate where your metabolism is in real life is to just look at what you're eating and to see how your weight is tracking. And very, very commonly, I'll see someone whose estimated expenditure, the amount of energy their body wants to live and thrive at something like this, 2,000, 2,400, and what they're actually eating is something below 1,600. Sometimes I'll see this number be 1,300. Sometimes I'll see it be 1,200. I've even seen 900. Okay, so are we starting to see where I may be going with this? Are we starting to get that, that there's a really big difference here. You take a bunch of people into a lab and you see how much energy do you need to live a good life? And then you look at someone in real life, you say, hey, how much energy are you giving yourself? And you start to see really big disparities. The interesting thing is when I interview this person, I ask them, how are you feeling? How is your sleep? How is your digestion? And if anybody's got a guess, they tell me, mm, I'm dragging most of the day. And I'm actually really sleeping intermittently. I'm hardly getting into deep sleep. Uh, actually, my digestion isn't very good either. Um, you can really quickly build kind of a, a portfolio of what's going on in people's lives. And, and usually it's like, I just don't have the same kick. I'm struggling to make it through the day. I had a woman tell me the other day, I'm falling asleep at my desk um, and, I, and I can't figure out what's going on. So what happens when we lose weight? So say you are, um, say you're just kind of living your normal life. You're not tracking your food and you go on a diet, any diet, doesn't matter, and you have success on this diet, you begin to lose weight. So the blue line here is, um, the blue line here is your weight, and the orange line is, is your metabolic rate. So the orange line is this whole thing, and the blue line is your, is your body weight. So say you, um, you start with your metabolic rate at like 2,300 which again is like a pretty, you know, we've all heard the 2000 calorie diet, 2300, like a pretty good baseline for, you know, say a guy who's like, you know, 200 pounds. Um, well, as he loses weight, his body seeks to adapt to that weight loss because our bodies are actually really good at keeping us from starving to death, right? You know, none of us want to starve to death. Our bodies have got our backs. It's not going to let us starve to death. So if it perceives that you're not getting that much energy, your metabolism says, well, I'm not going to just burn energy on making your brain work at 100% efficiency. I can actually make your brain work on 70% efficiency and save a little bit of energy. Okay, so what happens is you're losing weight as your body gets smaller, your metabolism slows down as well. So say this person went on a, um, on a, on a really calorie restricted diet. Um, and say they got their calories really low. So, so just for sake of argument, say they ate like 1500 calories. Well, 
their, their metabolism is going to slow down really quickly. And as their weight approaches this, so this looks like a successful journey, right? This is someone that lost like something like 20 pounds, you know, 197 would be the starting weight. Nope. 197 is the starting weight. They find a weight is like 177. So it's like, Hey, you know, I'm losing weight. Things are going great. Right. Well, and that may be true. A lot of times weight loss is really good. And the short term weight loss is going to make most people feel better, look better. Their, their blood work is going to look better, all that kind of stuff. But if this metabolism is slowing down in the background, then what happens when this person goes off their diet and instead of eating a 1500 calorie diet, when their metabolism has come all the way down to 1500 calories, what if they go back to a normal diet that's eating something like 2000 or that's eating something like that 2300? Well, if you just let your metabolism slow down this much and then you just go back to eating normally, you will begin to store fat so fast, it'll make your head spin. And it will be like, what is happening? This is the cycle of yo-yo dieting. Sink your calories, lose weight, sink your metabolism, you're vulnerable to weight regain. And the unfortunate thing is, there's good news. So this is not a doom and gloom uh, discussion, but there is some, some serious things that we've got to got to deal with here. So I'm starting a little bit more challenging and then I've got some, some hope to deliver here soon, but this is why yo-yo dieting is so comp, uh, um, is so common it's because we slow our metabolism down. Then we go back to normal store fat. The problem is the more often you're doing that, the more efficient your body actually gets at storing fat because it says, Hey, I didn't like the way you did that. I didn't like that. I thought I was going to starve to death, you know, I'm going to get really good at storing fat to make sure that I don't starve to death. Okay. So this is what happens when somebody is actively dieting, but remember so many people come and they're not even trying to diet, but their intake looks almost like a diet. So this is an example of what happens when somebody's just experienced a diet, but I could also just extend these two lines here. And this is where so many people live. We, we don't want to gain weight, so we don't eat that much food. We develop a mindset that food is going to make us, you know, food's going to make us get overweight. And if you just extend those lines, I work with a lot of people that kind of live at that low calorie, low intake state. And they also live with a slow metabolically adapt, adapted metabolism. Um, okay, so a couple other things to kind of fine tune this a little bit. So we understand that as you lose weight, your metabolism slows down, right? And that, that's a normal thing, by the way, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like I said, this is a sliding scale. There's ways to lose weight that's better and there's ways to lose weight that's, that's a little bit worse. Um, but not all weight loss is equal. So uh, this is an interesting thing. We look at the scale and we see a number, right? But behind that number, our body, you could break it down into basically two compartments. You've got lean mass and you've got fat mass. Your lean mass is muscles, bones, organs, brains, even water. Um, all of you should have like a, a, a scale that does lean mass and fat mass. Um, if you were to jump on that scale and then you were to drink a half a gallon of water and jump on the scale again, it would look like you put on like six pounds of muscle. Um, that's because you've got more water in there. So, so you basically, your, your body sees fat mass and lean mass. Lean mass is functional. Your muscles move your body. Your bones support your body. Your organs do your body. Um, if you lose lean mass, your metabolism slows down just like way more than if you're just losing fat. So if you lose um, a pound of something of muscles, bones, organs, brain, your metabolism will, will perceive that as a really big threat. And it will say this, this curve could be even faster. So you see metabolism slowing down here. If you lose lean mass quickly, you could see this orange line feasibly drop like this blue line just like boom, goes really, really low. So what we want to really hammer home is not all weight loss is equal. Let's really make more of an effort of talking about fat loss um, and, and actually maintaining lean mass. Just got a couple more slides here and then we can go into some, some questions. Also, the thing about BMR, uh, the, the, uh, uh, sorry, the thing about lean mass is lean mass is going to determine 
most of this equation. This BMR, your body doesn't have to spend that much energy taking care of fat. Your body's got to spend a lot of energy taking care of muscles, bones, brains, organ. And if you lose lean mass, you could easily see this BMR go from, you know, something like this 70% to like this 40%. Um, so losing lean mass accelerates the slowing of your metabolism. By the way, so I said earlier that you're not going to exercise your way out of a pizza that you ate, right? You're not going to be able to exercise your way to, 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 lose, um, to lose weight. However, um, one of the reasons why strength training and really actually focused strength training, lifting a little bit heavier um, and, and kind of consistently maybe increasing those weights. One of the reasons why that sort of wins versus just exercise is we're not trying to just exercise your way out of the pizza. What we're trying to do is make sure that your lean mass actually makes this BMR bigger. Does that make sense? So instead of just trying to cram a bunch of exercise into this last little 10%, and get an extra 12%, you know, get it from 10% to 12%. What we're trying to do is get the 70% to maybe 75%. And that's gonna have a much bigger effect. So if you put on a pound of muscle, you're actually gonna need more calories to sustain your body. If you put on a pound of muscle, you're gonna have a better time losing fat. Um, if you are losing weight like this, and you're not strength training, you are leaving yourself vulnerable to severely slowing this, um, this BMR. So if you're losing weight and you're not strength training, you're like, hey, I'm doing great. You might be doing great. You also might be setting yourself up for a, for a yo-yo. So as you lose weight, we really gotta focus on taking care of your functional lean body mass. So here's the good news. And I promise this is a good news, you know, kind of story. There is no observable lifetime damage. You know, we saw in the bodybuilders that, that this was like, a, this is an observation that people's hormones are out of whack for a long time. And there is, it, it is a long time. However, there's no such thing as I've got a slow metabolism. I've always had a slow metabolism. I'll always have a slow metabolism. We've just got to readapt our metabolism. And there's no such thing as permanent damage to your metabolism. So that's very, very good news. We can walk this back. Um, this can be reversed. Now it takes time, but the good news is it's, it's possible and it's possible to be done. If you have had, um, and, and, and here's the hard part is most of us don't know I'll have conversations with, with someone who's considering maybe working with us and I'll say, hey, here's what I want you to do. You know, and then maybe they're not quite ready to work with us. I'll say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just aim for eating 1800 calories over the next month. And then let's meet in a month and see if you want to pursue, pursue coaching. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll jump on a call at about two weeks with this person. And they'll say, yeah, I'm getting real close to 1800 calories. I say, great. Then I'll say, hey, why don't you track your last week? You know, why don't you track your fourth week before we meet one more time? And inevitably they'll track their food and they'll send it in and they might have one or two 1800 calorie days, but very often their average calories is something around 1300. Again, I'm not trying to talk about calories too much. You know, I, I, I don't like talking about calories to me. It's just, but, but what that shows is we're not very good at estimating what we're eating. And so many people say, well, I'm not hungry, so I must be eating enough, or I'm full, so I must be eating enough. Whereas really, it's hard for us to wrap our head around the fact that so many people have chronically kept a really low intake that their body has now adapted to. And, and it's hard for us to realize how long we might have been in this state um, until we really can begin to kind of walk back some of the signs. So one, like, homework that I would give for people is um, go ahead and, and check out this Harris Benedict equation. Again, I've probably done it for most of you or if, if not all of you, um, but you can Google this formula. You can put in your, um, you can put in your demographic. So weight, height, age, gender, and activity level. You can just estimate those things. You don't have to be perfect. And this number is probably going to shock you. 
And the reality is it's probably a slightly overestimation, but then, so do this number and then look at what you've been eating. And if you're 400 calories away from that, um, you know, that's something to, to think about. If you're a thousand calories away from that, again, the, the calories are not the end all be all solution is not the most important thing in the world, but it's something to consider that, hey, maybe we've got a, a real issue here that we need to kind of address. So, so maybe use this Harris Benedict equation or, or, or find the one that I've sent you in the past um, and then look at what you're eating and look at the difference. And if there's a really, really big difference, um, that probably means you're, you're a little bit underfed. Um, so here's a few more takeaways. Um, how do we fight metabolic adaptation? Well, the, the reality is most of what we do is, is geared at um, getting fat off in a way that is going to fight metabolic adaptation. A lot of what we do is helping people recover from being metabolically adept for a long time. But if you're dieting, try not to diet too fast. If you're losing, you know, three, four pounds in a week, it's just virtually impossible to, I'm not going to say impossible, but I will say virtually impossible to lose like three pounds of fat in a week. Um, if you're losing three pounds week after week after week, you're probably losing more than just fat. Um, maintaining, uh, maintain training and exercise while you're losing weight is really important. Um, and then just ensure that you have established appropriate intake before you start dieting. In other words, you can't just, many people like are going to not have success. If you just wake up one day and you say, oh, I'm just going to diet. Well, you're probably going to get better results. If you figure out where you are, say, say you figure out, well, I'm only eating 1500 calories. Is it really smart for me to go ahead and cut my calories to, to 1200 to 800, you know, cause how far are you going to have to cut those down? Um, and then if you are rebuilding after you maybe realize, Hey, I've been metabolically adapted for quite some time. If you're rebuilding, allow your body time to recover. Because again, this could, you could have been at a low intake for years and we don't, we don't always know. Sometimes we just have to guess, but allow your time to, to recover. This is especially true of my clients who've lost a lot of weight and gained some or all of it back recently, like within the last year, even two years, if somebody tells me that, that's sort of a red flag. They might need more time to, to rebuild. Um, and don't be scared to build a little bit of muscle. You know, some, some of us are scared to get a little bit bulky, but again, that's going to increase your metabolism and that'll make you more successful at losing fat. Um, and then just because you got your intake up to kind of a more normal, reasonable level, doesn't mean you're quite ready to go just straight back into dieting. Take time to, you know, get, get your body comfortable, get your body readapted, um, you know, get your habits in order. And then once you do those things, you can be ready to boom, to, to lose weight again. Um, this may, this process may of rebuilding may be a little bit uncomfortable because your body has adapted to such kind of a, a low intake. It may be uncomfortable. That's to be expected. It, but obviously communicate about how uncomfortable it is. And there's ways to mitigate how just how, how uncomfortable it is. Um, you know, obviously it should never be like actively painful, you know, seven days a week. Um, but it is going to be like an adjustment for your body. And we've got to call, we've got to apply another stressor to your body to allow it to grow. Um, so that is the basic metabolic adaptation in about 20 minutes. That's a lot of information, um, but I will open it up to a couple of questions here. Um, does somebody want to, I think you're all muted. So if you got a question, you might unmute yourself and then just, just shoot. I, I'm a little confused with um, calories. Yeah. Um, just, just upping my calories. Yeah. Because if you choose the rich nutrition food or the, yeah. the food that is superfoods, packing nutrition, usually those are low in calories or lower than if you eat a bunch of cookies or apple pie, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you could be eating a ton of food to get to those calories, right? Yeah, so, so and, and you're right. That's why even I said earlier, like, I don't like to talk about calories for too long because food quality obviously matters, right? And eating nutritious yeah. food matters. Right. However, I, I will say though, if you, but it's, it's all about like, what's the goal? Um, if the goal is to be generally healthy, eat healthy foods, you know, you should always be eating, you know, we, we advise at least 90% of your food should be greens and, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, but 
but there are calorie dense, good, healthy foods. Like, like mm -hmm. for example, you know, a, a lot of meat from a healthy chicken or from a healthy cow is going to be calorically dense and it's going to be healthy. But part of a part of a healthy body is a is a fast metabolism that can sustain some muscle that can sustain a, a, a brain. Um, so, so high calorie is not necessarily mutually exclusive with health. Does that kind of make sense? Right. Okay. Right. Yes, I have a follow up question. Yeah. Did I hear you right? We're supposed to have like 90% of our calories from greens. Oh, sorry. I meant, I meant like, like at least, no, I just mean from like healthy foods, like, you know, you can have a little budget sometimes for uh, for a bagel or for uh, you know maybe even a, a you know a, Lord willing a donut, <laughs> but the goal is not you know minimize those things so that you're eating whole foods for ninety percent of your diet. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, we'll call it you're, you're not going to be able to get ninety percent of your nutrition from spinach, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, Veronica, does that does that kind of make sense? What I'm saying with like just because it's high calorie doesn't mean it's unhealthy. Right, right. Okay. One thing that was encouraging is that you actually consume more energy eating than exercising. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So people have taken that too far, as you can imagine. It is still possible to overeat. Uh, but that's okay. the that's, that's the like crazy. Veronica saving me money on a sale. It says I saved you hundreds of dollars. <laughs> doing this, you're just going to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> it really it's it's exactly it's exactly like that. But but the the crazy paradox here that should kind of be at our in our mind is that we all think, well, I've just gained weight because I'm eating too much. You also might be gaining weight because we've got a slow metabolism. And both of those things need to be addressed. And so Veronica, everyone that I work with is gonna go through a period of lower calorie intake where our goal is fat loss and to lose fat. But you've also got to have a period where you're kind of building your fast metabolism that can sustain the fat loss, if that makes sense. So, so, there are, so that's why we think periodized nutrition, well, it's been demonstrated to be a, a, a huge, sort of solution to this problem, but, you know, let's have periods of metabolism building and then periods of fat loss. Um, so, but if you just eat perfectly healthy foods, you know, you just eat spinach, organic chicken, organic eggs, that's great. That's a good thing to do. If everybody can do that, then do it. But that's not necessarily just going to allow you to just get to your goal weight all of a sudden, if that makes sense, because we've got to reckon with, with metabolism. So it seems that you're trying to build and maintain a uh, body mass. Uh, again, the weight lifters lost the testosterone because the body said, we don't need this much mass. Drop the testosterone. We'll drop the body mass because you're making us get by with so little food content. Uh, yet, as we try to maintain body mass, again, our, our body is going to be working against that. I mean, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's it's so you could argue your body's working for you because it's trying to help you away from starvation yeah. um and it's really yeah. good at that but th but that turns into it really is working against us on the goals that we're trying to go for so we have to really though change our kind of our whole body uh composition, composition and and find a steady state there somehow. I love that. Yeah. So that's the way you said that is perfect because our goal isn't just to allow you to lose weight. Our goal is to transform your body that can maintain new weight. Yeah. Okay. Where does intermittent fasting, is that helpful? Because does that, does that mimic a yo-yo diet in some ways? Great question. It can. So, so again, this, this all comes down to the goal. So I fast, you know, I think we've got someone on this call that we fa that fasted this week. And, um, and it's a really, the, fa the, the fastest way to lose fat, particularly the harmful fat around your organs is to fast. But if you fast so much and so frequently and for so long that you're chronically eating a low amount of food, it can cause metabolic adaptation. Um, I don't have a ton of time left on this call, but this really great. What I'll do is I'll open up Facebook 
you can shoot in any question you have, and I'll spend time today by the end of the day answering some call, uh, answering questions on Facebook. Is that is that good for everybody? Shoot me a text, an email, or just ask 